All right, are we ready to rock? Yes. Okay, three. Oh, are we 103? Yes, we are, aren't we? 103. Number yes. 103. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I just suddenly, as I started launching into it, I was just like, hang on, are we? Oh, hang on. <laughs> right. Three, two, one. This is Trainer Talk, the podcast brought to you by Sharon Gaskin of the Trainers Training Company and me, Jeanette Tessier of the Get Back Gang. In our weekly show, we cover news and views from our businesses along with a top of mind topic. Of course, it wouldn't be Trainer Talk, the podcast without the Dog Walking Digest. And every now and again, we invite a guest along to share their experience and expertise. After 90 episodes of just audio, we're now on YouTube as well. So feel free to catch up there. Just search for the Trainers Training Company or the Get That Gang or download us on audio only through your favourite podcast streamer. So why not sit back with a cuppa, make that journey or chore go a little bit quicker with our weekly inspiration for developing your training business. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Trainer Talk, the podcast, and we're at episode number 103. Yes, we are, definitely, 103. That's the one we're at. We <laughs> just had a little discussion about what number are we on now? Because, frankly, once you get past 100, it's just... It all yeah, merges into it one. It all merges yeah. into one. Anyway, how are you doing, Sharon? How's life? I How's tricks? Um, be good, thank you. The sun is shining uh, yet again here down in on the Swansea Riviera <laughs> uh, but you know I've got my blinds up now so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter so exactly just, yeah but it is a shame to shut the sun out but uh, yeah but you know I think uh, to have you squinting uh <laughs> into the camera it's probably not the best thing really is it mm. and I think we've all we've all done those sort of you know contortionist kind of tricks when we've been sitting in front of a window and, and had sun coming in and sort of you know trying to get out the way of the sun and, and not sort yeah. of uh, you know uh, be squinting anybody but anyway we've talked about your blinds before you have your blinds we're oh not God. we're not encumbered by the sun uh we're from, not. Uh, from where you are so what else is going on well, what else is going on? Well, I know, and I've seen that some people in our Training Talk members group have been uh, uh, been keeping up with the house saga. So uh, I'm going to live the late, going to give the latest instalment because uh, I know everybody's very anxious to hear this. Uh, so the so we have an offer on our house which we accepted. So that took what less than two weeks to, <laughs> to sell that. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that it has stopped the the flow of people trolling around which uh, i'm very glad about because that's a pain isn't it when you you know you have to keep going out and you know you know tidying up and all that business so that's good to get that out of the way um but it has left us with um you know with a little bit of a problem now because of course we have to find somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed this mythical amazing house that uh, you were convinced yes. doesn't exist well, well, I've been manifesting though. Yeah. You know, so, so it does exist. It is out there somewhere. It just needs to appear. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, and there's one, you know, one possible. There's a possible mm -hmm. uh, that we're actually going back to see this afternoon. Yeah. Um, you know, location wise, absolutely spot on, absolutely where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Bizarrely, it's just behind the house that we didn't buy you know the one <laughs> we, went, we were going to buy originally Indeed. and then you know we went we didn't like it and all that kind of stuff so it's actually bizarrely right behind it and um, in a much better location because it's not on the main road so yeah. it's on a lovely lovely little private road nice and quiet all the rest of it great stuff but you know it's uh compromises to be made it doesn't have the view from the kitchen although it does have views but not from the kitchen mm -hmm. um you know it's a bit smaller um you know we'd have to do it up all that kind of stuff etc etc mm -hmm. and you know i just keep thinking to myself what would phil and kirsty say because i need their help now <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah i mean it's it's a bit like uh, their which one is it the love it or list it one. Oh, uh, i know you know yeah, you've just done yeah. your house up but there's this other house that would also need doing up but it's in the location that you wanted i mean so many different things to to think about aren't there yeah there, there really are and i was just sort of thinking help and the thing is we know you know it's always all about location which is why we want to you know go downhill in the first place yeah but 
kind of oh it's just really it's really difficult one because this house has a huge amount going for it mm-hmm. it's really easy to live in um you know it's great from work perspective I've got a nice office all these things are just really great we've got the amazing view um but you know it is location 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 absolutely it? uh, you know and uh, what kirsty would say is you can't have that down the hill you're gonna have to make compromises you absolutely know? well that's the thing i mean we're, when we were talking earlier it's kind of you know do do you want to be in the view or do you want to be out of it yeah. but looking at it um and you know i mean you were saying to me that it has got views it's just you have to go outside and, and up the terrace yeah, yeah. sort of garden yeah, to yeah. see them yeah. um yeah, yeah. but you know i mean i think it's considering that was the sort of the location that you both fell in love with uh down the hill yeah you know yeah. Uh, and yeah i think to an extent i think you made compromises it to go into the house you're in now oh yeah yeah, yeah. uh yeah. but now now you're in there and now you've uh sort of you know done it up and, and to your to your interior design spec and all the rest of it it's like <laughs> but it would be so easy to stay here now um so you know i mean it's uh there's there's always going to be some kind of compromise isn't there uh yeah. unless you've got uh, a bottom unless pit of yeah. money and you know you can choose to to buy wherever you want in the location you want knock down what's there and build what whatever is, yeah. is perfect for you uh then there's always going to be sort of these compromises to make but uh, i think yeah. uh if you you're going back again aren't you this afternoon so yeah, yeah. go and have a look at it and like you say do it with practical eyes rather than emotional eyes absolutely eyes. really really practical mm-hmm. so uh yeah and that is the thing you know if you had a massive i don't know if had another i don't know buy another three hundred thousand, then i would be you know there's plenty of houses that i would be going round to view uh-huh. for sure <laughs> <laughs> oh it's always the way isn't it it's always the way every now and again i do a little search for um uh cottages uh closer to closer to mum uh, actually uh just uh, thinking practically from the point of view of you know they're both uh well she's mid 70s john's late 70s um and uh, sooner or later there's going to be i'm going to need to be closer uh is effectively uh, what i'm saying but it's like but i don't want to live in their village so it's kind of you know what's what's a reasonable distance reasonable location i'm only 40 minutes i mean you know 35 if, if it's late at night it's no traffic away from them at the moment but that's still quite significant you know if if one of them has a fall or something like that uh you know you want to be a bit closer so it's all sort of you know planning not for now but for for next stage and just looking at these uh, things and when you have to put the maximum price in on the property um search websites uh, it's like how how much should i go up to it's like oh go on let's put no max and see what's going on that's what i do (laughs) (laughs) and you see some of these places and some of them i mean you know i wouldn't i wouldn't buy something like that in a million years um a because it's just me and scamp and at some point scamp's not going to be here so it's just be me uh and it's just kind of okay do i really need 14 bedrooms probably not no you know a little excessive Mm -hmm. (laughs) exactly but then equally i mean you see a three-bedroom property down in uh lilliput which is the next sort of suburb along from sandbanks um yeah. and it's like six million for a waterfront property oh yeah, yeah. and you just like, say yeah, oh, yeah. Word. you know i mean and, and it's it's nice in that it looks out onto the water and that's you know always been a, a sort of a dream uh for something like that but it's like yeah but six million i mean okay it's five million something or other six million yeah. basically by the by the time you've done everything else and you look at it and you think yeah it's okay but you know is it really that special is it really that special you know yeah i have seen houses because i do exactly the same yeah. i look and i just look at everything and uh and i do i have a nosy at everything and uh honestly there are some houses there are plenty of houses here um you know over two million one and a half million you know and you look at them and some of them are just not even that nice yeah 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 <laughs> It's exactly like, exactly and they do say uh apparently um you know if you're going to buy in well there's sandbanks lily put camphor cliffs if you're going to buy in any of those areas you haven't really got money unless you can buy the property tear it down and rebuild what you want oh, uh in its place and it's just oh my word there's always there's always some sort of building work going yeah. on down there and these massive yeah. massive piles um and you just think okay all right and, th- and then you, you find out people are using it as a holiday home it's just like oh. this is what happens here you know a lot of it that's what i was saying to you just now wasn't, wasn't yeah. my pre 
amble like property here at the moment is literally things are just being snapped up within days and uh, and it's really really moving quickly and it puts people under pressure and I think a lot of the time anything that needs doing up is you just builders just come in and also people coming from you know from London yes. there's so many people who came around to look at this house from London yeah yeah know? I can and believe like, that this is what's happening people are moving away from yeah because they think they can work from home and it's like oh let's go and live by the scene everything is just like fueling the yeah, yeah completely of, it is madness the estate agents around here must be rubbing their hands <laughs> they're, they're doing barely anything other than just sticking it on zipla and <laughs> the way you go, they've yeah. got you know yeah, it's ridiculous yeah it's crazy isn't it <laughs> crazy crazy i mean i must admit i looked when uh, the couple that are in downstairs at the moment because for anybody that hasn't followed the the podcast previously um i live in a converted house uh, which means that uh, although i've got the top floor and it's lovely it's two bedroom uh, flat but it's really, really nice size because it's a converted house. So downstairs, I think downstairs is a worse layout because effectively I have the communal hallway. Uh, but most of the time they go in and out of their little extension kitchen thing. But they haven't got a bath in their bathroom. There's only enough room for a shower room. There's like this really slim hallway that goes from their lounge area through to the bedroom area and they've got two bedrooms as well and the bedrooms are a good size uh, but at the same time I just think the the layout isn't as nice uh, as upstairs as mine yeah. um, but when the couple that are in downstairs at the moment they moved in November something like that and it can take sometimes up to three months for the property values to to show up on on the mm. uh, websites and stuff and then it came up was it last week the week before something like that and I'm just looking at it going, oh, oh, hello. Well, that's about 75,000 more than I thought it was going to be. Because <laughs> the prices of flats around yeah. here have stayed solid for at least 15 years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's gone up. It's like, oh, oh, that that makes life interesting. And then yeah. I'm thinking, but actually, I, I really love living here. It's just, you know, it's yeah. it's the only place I've ever been where the morning after I moved in, I came out of the bedroom in the morning and just as soon as I walked into the hallway, I thought, oh, this feels like home. And there were boxes everywhere and there was wood chip everywhere. <laughs> and it was, you know, yeah. I bought it as a doer upper. Uh, originally, the intention was to do it up and, and to move on after five years. But A, I was enjoying living here. B, the property um, market wasn't recovering because I bought in 2006. And of course, the crash was eight, nine. Uh, so, you know, it, it was kind of, OK, well, I'll stay here. And now it's just like, well, it's where I am. It's home. It's, you know. Uh, it's there's just so there's too much stuff in here I mean we talked about decluttering the other week there's definitely too much yeah. stuff in here but it is it's sort of you know this this is um uh, apart from anything uh, you know I've got my office the way I want it now all that kind of yeah, stuff like so. me yeah that's all these things I'm thinking about you know yeah. get up now you know you see the sun shining got a beautiful view and you know I got up I think it was Saturday morning and I got up it must have been five o'clock to, to let Jem out and you know, the sun was rising over the hill. It was just beautiful, beautiful oh. over the hill, over the sea. And I looked and I was thought, really? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're just looking at the moment, right? We just are just looking. looking. We are just looking. But the problem is as well for us is because we are literally looking in such a small area, um, very, very specific. Um, and also, we absolutely know that some of the houses will not work. Mm. Do you know, because you're either some, you're either looking at something that is too small, no parking, or there's something like massive that we can't afford. You know, so again, it's like it's it, it's it's a tough one. Yeah. So, uh, but we will see. Yeah. We will see. I tell you what, what I tell you what will be funny if we um, if we do end up buying this house we're going to look at this afternoon you know the first thing we'll be doing is is uh knocking the wall down and putting in the new <laughs> kitchen and having using the same kitchen company in fact i might even have the same kitchen i, I honestly because i love it so much yeah and it's all is my dream kitchen it's the nicest kitchen i've ever ever had yeah and uh i can just imagine trolling back to the kitchen people there oh we want another kitchen now different house same kitchen then look at us going <laughs> what yeah they, they must work with people that flip properties all the time i'm sure they do i mean maybe not so much uh in your area because as you say the, the market is just bonkers and, and all the rest of it but they must be used to to people doing something like that right yeah. done it up living it for six months now we're moving again exactly yeah so it's fine. anyway so, so 
that's that. So that was a very long, you know, right. So that's what's happening on the house. Um, yeah, pubs and cafes are open outside in Wales today. Hooray! Very <laughs> exciting. Yeah, we're joining uh, the English lot finally. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all going to be open, so that, which is really nice. Uh, what else have I been doing work, work-wise, business-wise? Um, I, we had two sessions last week for the complete trainer did we not we did yeah that was really good so all both uh to do with money um that was really great so we had uh alex hewlett our resident uh money man within trainer talk <laughs> he gave a great session mm. on managing your money didn't he yeah. people were really loved it and we're really really engaged with that definitely so that um, and then we did a little session on money beliefs, didn't we? <laughs> we did, we did. And uh, yes, I mean, we knew in advance that uh, uh, quite a few people weren't able to to make it live. Um, but uh, since when has that stopped us? I mean, you know, there's there's nobody else on this call with us now. <laughs> <laughs> Even when we weren't recording the podcast, there was no issue uh, about finding enough to talk about. But yeah, that was, that was um, a really good session as well in terms of being able to help people understand where we've both come from, where we are now and and where we're wanting to get to next. Um, Because I do think there is a sort of, there's a tendency and I don't think I know there's a tendency because you and I both do it. We look at people who are further ahead than us in business. And and actually I would consider you as somebody who is further ahead than me, but both (laughs) of us have, people that we would look at and sort of go oh right okay so that's the next level kind of thing um yeah. and yet you know we kind of forget that there are people that are on the complete trainer now that are looking at us going oh well they've got it all sorted uh, you know yeah. they, they know what they're doing as far as money is concerned it's like well yeah i, I would say probably 90 percent of the time there's still that 10 percent where there's something that you go oh okay yes that that's something to work on then <laughs> there's there's another money block another money belief or something something coming out of the woodwork going oh why did I do that Mm, very interesting so but I think the the difference is that we are we are able to look at it from the point of view of having worked through things like that previously as opposed to never having examined any of our money beliefs or our money stories or the things that were holding us back um and interestingly I mean we'll we'll be talking about a sort of a, um, a similar subject in top of mind today, won't we? Uh, for, mm. for that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a really yeah. good session. And and I think thank you, lovely Denise, who was there live with us, um, who was just uh, sitting there absorbing what we were talking about uh, and uh, able to ask a few questions. But it was great great to have her there so that we could get some feedback for yeah. you know is this is this making any kind of sense? <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, money beliefs is something that uh, we can talk about for absolutely the ages because we one because we know how important it is just from our own experiences and from you know observing and working with all you know business owners over the years um you know and 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 two because we've been on our own journeys with it you know for, for sure and have it's really funny as you say some of the things that we think now or do now are just completely different to how they were um you know even 12 months ago absolutely you know, just always always learning and evolving and i do find it a an absolutely fascinating subject as well i mean this whole you know this whole, <laughs> this whole woo woo <laughs> thing and energy yeah you know i am just so so bought into this i'm so mm. invested in it i just totally believe it works yeah. you know I, I really really do it's it's, it's incredible you know how well, it does work. I think but you know does. you and I are both evidence of the fact that yeah there's there's something there even if you don't buy into the whole thing wholeheartedly there is something there uh, about understanding the the flow and, and energy of, of money in itself uh, and I think that's part of the reason why it's so important to uncover your money stories and new money beliefs uh, because uh, it, it can have a real impact uh, on 
how successful uh, you are in your business. Uh, so yeah, so that that was a great a great session to do that. But I wonder how many people were would uh, just realise um, just how important it is to kind of embrace that energetic side of things. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. You should, folks. Yeah, so important. Embrace the woo woo. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> I know there are going to be people listening to this, and I'm, I'm thinking of one in particular. Hi, Emma. Um, <laughs> listening to this, going what? eye rolls all over the place <laughs> oh embrace the woo woo oh, yeah. um, that was that what else did I do last week uh we had well we did our um top of mind uh topic for last week was decluttering wasn't it mm-hmm. um and uh, following that discussion right. two weeks ago but yeah was it two weeks yeah. ago okay um and last week um, was overthinking it was yeah or well, maybe yeah anyway as a result of last week's podcast about overthinking and building on what we did on decluttering, we did a little bit of decluttering and streamlining of our own, uh-huh. did we? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Did we? Yeah. Yes. Which is kind of, talk about putting things into action straight away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, strike while the iron's hot and all the rest of it. Um, but I think there is, it's important to, um, to always be thinking, always be thinking. It's important to make sure that you don't lose sight of the fact that you know we we are spinning lots of plates in business yeah you know no, no matter how streamlined we think we are we are still spinning lots of plates and we just have to keep an eye on just how many plates we're adding uh yeah. to to extend the metaphor a little bit further uh and i think we've got to the point where uh, you you just had too many plates right yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely too many plates uh too many products programs facebook groups all the rest of it and it's been something that's been on my mind for a a long uh, time because i was aware of it so we just you know we just we just had a a chat about how we could uh, streamline and declutter some of those didn't we we won't say too much about it yet because uh, all will be revealed in the fullness of time (laughs) (laughs) you're making it sound like there's going to be a big announcement okay there'll be a little announcement there yeah people yeah you know, so. yeah i mean it is it is significant but it's not drastic i no. think no. uh is is a good way of putting it and it is it's uh, absolutely like all i think great decisions once you've made the decision it makes complete sense and you think why didn't i do this in the first place yeah. um but you know that's fine nothing wrong there i mean I'd, i've uh, done a similar thing with uh, with what i'm doing with the get that gang uh, and uh, i just got an obsession with having things in threes uh, which we know is is you know super important and all the rest of it um but in terms of the the new products and, and programs and stuff and and it was just the third one just wasn't sitting comfortably for some reason so it's like no get rid just yeah you know i've kept the words i've got the words in a document somewhere if i decide to bring it back but it wasn't it wasn't feeling right here we go energetically uh so there you go i decluttered it yeah yeah absolutely yeah Yeah, absolutely i always know i've said this many times on the podcast that because i am an action taker Mm -hmm. you know i I like to get on and do stuff um but if for whatever reason i am just not doing it it's because it's not feeling right and sometimes i don't even know why it's not feeling right but once i work out why it's not feeling right then I will know and I either decide not to do it or I just go, oh, right, I can do it now. Yeah. Just move, take action. Yeah. yeah. And, and there was a lot of stuff around what we talked about last week about the decluttering that the, these various things just weren't feeling right. Mm-hmm. And, and I was aware that they were just sitting there and I wasn't doing anything with them. And it was because they weren't feeling right. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I tapped into what it was that was causing that blockage and uncovered it, and I was like, okay, great, great. Yeah. I can get on and do it now. Yeah. So, you know, that's good. That, Really yeah. good. That was good. Um, I what else did I do? I had a meeting with Terry, mm-hmm. with our lovely Terry um Pierce and Mr. Gamef- Gamification in our trainer talk uh, members group and uh, exploring ways of uh bringing um some gamification into trainer talk, which is quite interesting. Yeah, uh, which I will update you on a bit later on. Mm-hmm. Um, and also we had a uh, lovely spotlight session with Karen Curiton, mm-hmm. our trainer sort of local leader uh, for East Midlands. And she gave a great session on LinkedIn and how to pimp your linked up pro- LinkedIn profile. Uh-huh. <laughs> Love the title. Uh-huh. Uh, great session. So thank you so much for that, Karen. I know she listens to the podcast. So 
formal shout out for you, Karen. Um, and finally, I launched the um, memberships course. Mm -hmm. So this thing that I, you know, had uh, imposter syndrome about um, and, you know, decided to actually, you know, do it because people were asking for it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and people have signed up for it now. So I know, got to do, do it now. I've got to do it. <laughs> you do, you do. And I know we say this every time. It's like, oh, one person signed up. Well, you can still cancel if you want to. It's like, no, two people just like, no, got to do it now. And even after yeah. one person signing up, it's like, it's good practice. You must do it. You must do you it. Absolutely have to but, do it. So yeah, now, yes. now you you've got uh, some good numbers uh, on there, which is very cool amazing yeah i think we've got how many i don't know we've got 18 something like that yeah so. something like that something like so, that um, so yeah so uh, yes yeah, so the upshot of it is is that i've got to do it but <laughs> i'm actually really excited i was gonna say it. you're excited aren't you yeah, yeah. Really excited about it. yeah it's kind of the so the, the feel good factor because you know i was um going through my first uh session on sunday mm -hmm. you know watch it which we haven't mentioned it's the clay court season oh. you know my favorite time of year <laughs> so i you know yesterday afternoon i was like keeping half an eye on rafa mm -hmm. and uh you know sorting out my you know module one ships thing at the same time <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a perfect combination for you multitasking absolutely <laughs> so he was obviously feeling my good energy and my good vibes because he won you know, of so course well he is the king of clay i mean you know yeah amazing so it has been great. quite <laughs> extraordinary actually how little we've mentioned tennis or indeed rafa uh over the last year What's understandably i know i know pandemic pa who needs a pandemic anyway well it has been a little bit it, it's just been a bit weird yeah. because you know not every tournament has happened mm -hmm. a lot of the happened with no crowd which i can't be doing watching to be honest i'm just <laughs> not getting to watching tennis with nobody there there's no atmosphere it's horrible but uh, but i realized it was really funny actually watching barcelona yesterday afternoon yeah i literally was watching it for about half an hour before i realized they did actually have a crowd there <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh the people there oh wow <laughs> okay yeah and there was noise and everything it was amazing so uh yeah normal services busy oh so. well there we are there we are that's good are. that's really that's good really good very yeah. exciting lots of stuff going on anything else to report from your week no god you know it's been quite a week has it, it has we should have asked. <laughs> <laughs> well my week i mean you know i was going to say by contrast but actually there have been quite a few interesting and, and exciting things going on for for me in my week obviously outside of uh, the chats that we've already mentioned uh, in terms of, you know, uh, sorting out some decluttering for your business and, and uh, talking about money beliefs and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, I've had some some really nice chats with people last week, uh, a few mentoring uh, chats, a few chats with people who are going to become uh, mentoring clients, including one lady who um, came almost out of the blue from somebody else who out of the blue I didn't know he was going to do this put a post up on Facebook going hey you need to talk to Jeanette about online courses and then somebody booked in but the the reason they were able to book in so easily is because I set up my Calendly link which I am uh, so happy about um yeah. so I've, I've paid for that and that's that's done that's a big tick because it's so much easier just to send it to oh. somebody and go right find you find your space uh which is fantastic is. so yeah. that's really good um so very happy about all of that I'll get a few bits and pieces sorted out for, from that point of view. Uh, I had um, a client who uh, I'd done a one page website for her. Then she decided she was going to change her offering a little bit um, and offer VA services. And then she was also she decided she was going to offer web design in that. Um, and so she was doing a web design course. You go, oh, you have to take my website down so I can redo it, and blah, blah, blah. And I need this. And I'm, OK, fine. No problem. Um, and she came back to me this morning and said, no, it's too difficult. Can you do it for me? And I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> not a problem. Um, but I mean, I, I did go back to her and say, it sounds like it's an issue with the trainer rather than the trainee, to, to be honest, because she was saying it's just it's all too much is overwhelmed. And she's an intelligent lady. I know she is. Yeah. So, you know, if, if she's not getting it and then yeah. she explained to me it's not an in-person expl explanation course. They've basically done the equivalent of recording a PDF and, and sending it. Uh, right, to to right. people it's like that's not an online course ah. um so anyway uh so that was um just an aside that was something that came back this morning but on friday 
yeah, it must have been Friday. Was it Friday or Thursday? I can't remember now. It must have been Friday. Um, uh, I was finally uh, allowed to officially announce myself as a certified master persuader. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so uh, even though I do still have a, a what's been laughingly called a final exam, essentially, <laughs> I say laughingly, for some people, this is going to be an exam for them. It will feel like an exam for them. But what I have to do is submit a video of me talking to somebody and talking through doing an audit. Yeah. Uh, for them on uh, on some persuasion stuff and of course I do this all the time for websites and, and that kind of thing yeah. so I'm very comfortable with recording myself yeah. with recording something where I'm talking to somebody on screen you know it's all that kind of yeah. so it's like you know that's fine so as long as I have uh, that video done by the end of this week and obviously sent off by the end of this week then it's all fine it's no problem uh, but uh, we were allowed to release it early um, so I've got a nice little frame on my Facebook profile Yay. at the moment Woo <laughs> certified master persuader well done. so well, I think well at the moment what that means is you know I, I'm I'm still in the uh, feeling like um, uh, I am um, consciously incompetent yeah you know yes. that's the thing because yeah. it, yeah. it doesn't feel like I know everything uh, naturally uh, at the moment mm -hmm. I've got all the tools and I've got everything to to go away and, and learn it but it's mm -hmm. it's still that kind of um not imposter syndrome so much as I haven't I don't feel like I've practiced enough with it yet mm -hmm. but that will be remedied this week because that's part of the the final assignment yeah. final exam that kind of thing um so yeah so uh, when we get to the point where it's like yeah I can do it without referring to my notes that's when yeah. I will feel uh, competent uh, uh, about it but uh, already I mean you know the, the uh, woman that's running it has given us all a good talking to so you already know 99% more than most people about this stuff and, and it's just like, oh okay all right yeah it's it, a bit so. like me thinking about the membership so I, you know I was when I was doing this at the weekend I was getting all excited you know and I was just like oh yeah I can talk about that oh yeah I can talk about that oh yeah I can. and then I was like yeah I probably I you say I know more than the people who run the course, for sure. But, <laughs> yeah. but I will actually say, a bit like I do, never do a webinar for the complete training. Yeah. You know, you know, I'll say to people, you know, I don't know everything about membership. Oh, well, nobody can. Nobody knows everything about no, everything. Exactly. Well, you know, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning and I'm still experimenting and trying. And, you know, certainly everything isn't right. And, you know, but I, yeah, I know. But that's exactly. Yeah. We're on the course. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So it's exactly what we put on the sales page was, you know, I, I'm, I as in you will talk to them about you know everything that you have tried up until this point and stuff that you're trying right now because yeah. it is it's constant it's uh, as we yeah. say a lot of the time everything's an experiment so yeah I think it's great I'm, the people that are on it I think they're going to get a fantastic experience um and yeah, uh, yeah. I, th I think this one can uh, has got possibilities uh, for you it's going to fly so uh, yeah it's very exciting <laughs> so yeah so um so yeah so I, I put a little bit of, of persuasion um, magic uh, onto the emails uh, for you going out about about that about the more than membership. You did absolutely, yes, you did, you did, you did, you did. Because we have this bit, we have this uh, ongoing banter, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, when I go, all oh, right, then Mrs. Master Persuader, <laughs> <laughs> press <Like> this. You <laughs> know. Oh, the pressure. But yeah, I think it I think it worked rather well, so I'm quite pleased about that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, so yes, yeah, so I can uh, legitimately uh, use it as a case study um uh, in terms of and here's how i've put some of my stuff into into uh, yeah. into effect uh, so yes yeah, so that was good uh, and then on saturday day uh, i did some coaching for um a couple of umpires uh, which is the first time since october uh and it's really i mean it's such the tail end of the season at the moment it's really only friendly stuff but because of the the changes that are coming into effect for next season we've still got a few umpires that need assessment to get them up to the right level so that they're slotted in in the right way uh, next season uh, and uh, so my coaching was preparation for one in particular who's going to be assessed mm. next week and he was just um, we were quite happy to assess him on this match uh, but uh, because I assess for both Hampshire and South as they stand at the moment I could have assessed him to see whether or not he was good enough to go up South mm. uh, which he absolutely is um, but uh, he he said because he felt so out of practice, he just wanted a, a coaching kind of, you know, uh, a service watching, as we call it, um, for people. Because we do um, we do MOT watchings for, for people at least once in a season. We would go and see somebody, whether it's an, uh, formally listed as an assessment or a coaching, just to make sure they're still at the standard. 
uh, the mm -hmm. the panel that we've allotted them to. Um, but this one, he said, not so much an MOT as a service. So okay, no problem. Uh, but it was, <laughs> okay. I mean, it's beautiful. I very very cold wind, incredibly cold wind. Oh God, that has yeah. been so Ooh. cold. Um, uh, yesterday. But, yeah, go on. yeah. No, I was going to say again for the second week in a row. I was like, oh, see in the garden, Papa and I read, but no, no chance. The wind Not was like behold oh, again. It really was. <laughs> it was biting, absolutely biting. So, um, you know, even though it's brilliant sunshine, uh, I still had the equivalent number of layers that I would have on for a winter match, a proper winter match, um, because it was that cold with the with the wind, but. What was lovely as well was because we're now overlapping into the cricket season, the cricket pavilion yeah. were, was open because they had a match on. So we were able to go and get some drinks afterwards, which is something we haven't been able to do for, well, all of last season uh, because everywhere closed down. Uh, all the pavilions and everyone said, no, if you can't get it outside, you can't come in uh, to have anything. So so that was quite nice being able to sort of sit outside in the sunshine and do a debrief with a drink, um, which was quite unusual. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so that was really good. Uh, and then on Saturday night, we went out and, and ate at the the pub obviously outside um but mum booked a bit late to to get into the marquee proper so we had to be in the we were marquee adjacent um yeah. <laughs> but it was a bit of a wind tunnel so she said bring something warm so we did we all wrapped up and actually the wind died down a little bit so we were we were okay uh obviously we had hot food and it wasn't until sort of the last sort of 10 minutes sitting there that we're thinking oh actually getting a bit chilly now um but that was lovely that was really nice to be able to go out to eat uh as opposed to eating in um so that that yeah. it does make a real difference uh, to be able oh, to do something yeah. like that so it does did you see uh well you know i know you saw it because i sent it to you <laughs> but uh, our friends uh at the secret kitchen swansea uh, what they've done with their outside space. It's so space. pretty. Really, stunning. really nice. Really nice. Absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, they're so creative there. Mm. They're, they're so, so good. Um, so, yeah, I was like, oh, I can't wait to go down. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Don't you see, you'll be complaining about the tourists before long. Well, indeed, you know, indeed, it's going to be very, very busy over the summer again, I'm sure. Absolutely. I'm sure. Absolutely. I think you've got, you know, a little while before uh, before it gets ridiculous, haven't you? Yeah, but, uh, we've only got a few days before, you know, we've got to stop taking jam on the beach. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's true, isn't it? May. Yeah. God, uh, blimey, I can't believe May's coming around so quick. I can't. It's, it's just crazy. Isn't it? crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's not go there. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, we <laughs> we spent quite a lot of time uh, talking about our weeks this this week. Should we do our top of mind topic? Should we move on? Let's to do our top of mind topic. I think you wanted to talk about uh, assumptions, expectations. Yeah. So yeah. it was uh, just something that I thought would be quite interesting for people to think about, and that's all we ever want to do with the top yeah. of mind topic, anyway, is to give people something yeah. to think about and how they can apply it in their own business. Uh, and it's just yeah. Uh, as a result of a few things that uh, you know people that I've talked to uh, and also things that I've looked at and reflected on myself uh, over the last couple of weeks and thinking about it's such a dangerous place to get into when we start using our assumptions as a reason to do something or not do something when we are particularly when we are putting in proposals or when we're asking for money or you know in terms of pricing something uh, and especially when we make those assumptions because our expectation is that somebody else doesn't have perhaps the budget to pay for something or they don't have the inclination to to do something or whatever that might be and the problem with expectations and assumptions is that they are all based on our personal experience and we put our own filters so we were talking about money beliefs and, and money stories we apply our own filters our own beliefs to what we're putting out there and sometimes we actually cut our noses off despite our faces because we might not charge an appropriate amount for something or request an appropriate amount for something because our assumption is the other person can't pay it. Mm. And mm. in reality, the other person might be sitting there going, oh, blimey, that's a bit of a bargain. Thank you very much. Yeah. Or price might not even come into yeah. it at all. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It might just be, well, that's just what it costs. What? What do you mean yeah. you've agonised over it for days? Uh, which, yeah. you know, I, I know people do. I used to, to do that. And, I mean, now... Yeah, it is true to say I was just I, I hesitated there because I'm just trying to make sure that what I'm about to say is in fact true. Uh, so, uh, But now, honestly, when I'm pricing something, it's little more than 30 seconds thinking. Mm -hmm. It's just, no, that yeah. feels right. That's the price. There you go. 
Mm -hmm. It's almost like, um, so what you're saying, which I totally agree with, by the way, is that when we have those thoughts, we are basically uh, transposing our money beliefs onto our potential clients. And another way of looking at it would be, how dare we do that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think we are transposing our beliefs on somebody else because completely yeah. completely and it i mean it really reminds me of um gosh was it this year or last year uh and i still i still i'm in two minds as to whether or not i handled this appropriately uh so ages ago i was asked to add my name to a post on facebook as people offering website services right mm. now yeah. it must be something in the way i phrased it or something in the assumptions of people reading it or I don't know what, but the number of requests I've had from people assuming that I'm a VA offering website services as opposed to a website designer offering website services. Mm -hmm. The reason for making that distinction is that typically VAs don't charge any more than their normal hourly rate, um, Mm -hmm. which in terms of the comparison between what a VA would charge and what I would charge, I'm usually about three times the cost. Right Mm. now, I'm comfortable with that because that is an appropriate rate for the amount of experience and and what I do and what I can provide and all the rest of it. If VAs choose to charge their normal hourly rate for the website stuff they do, that's that's their business. That's up to them. But what I have found is that these inquiries were coming through to me talking about, oh, you know, can you tell me how much it would cost for blah, blah, blah. And I would go back with an appropriate um, price based on my hourly rate and they're oh that's you know very expensive or or whatever now I can say compared to what but of course it's compared to a VA and what they're looking for is a VA so I had one come through oh crikey um I was I think I was going around the supermarket anyway this must have been this sometime last year um and it came through on Facebook messenger saying oh can you tell me you know what your rates are and honestly I am now in a position where if somebody's opening gambit to me when they're asking about my services is how much do you charge they can't afford me now I know that's an assumption but if you're going straight into the relationship with my my decision about whether or not to work with you is entirely based on how much you're going to charge me then you're not thinking, you're not in a value position. You're not in a value state of mind. You're not looking at it from the point of view of what you're going to get. You're looking at it from the point of view of what can I afford. Now, Mm. you know, I know that we we should budget, should budget and and think about and and all the rest of it, right? But at the same time, from my point of view, is if if your first question is how much is it, uh, then you you aren't going to, it doesn't matter how much time I spend talking about the value of the thing, if the price is too much for you, the price is too much for you. And because of the number of people going, oh, you're not a VA, in response to me going back with prices, I jumped straight into the, um, uh, you know, I'm not a VA, VA uh, and therefore, you know, you might want to, to look for somebody else. Um, something like, I can't remember how I phrased it, but it was something like that, to which this person came back and said, well, why would you assume I can't afford you? I said, because I'm not a VA. And, and mm. my prices are typically three to four times that of a VA. Um, so it's based on experience. That's why I'm saying this. And it was just it was something in the way that she'd phrased it originally that made me thought, no, you're not looking for what I've got to offer. But still, I look back on it and I think, was I making assumptions? Was I jumping? I mean, she never came back to me after I said mm-hmm. my prices are typically three to four times that of that of a VA. So, yeah. you know, was I right? Was I not right? I don't know. But, yeah. you know, honestly, I wasn't feeling it. And and, and I don't. You know, if if, if uh, anybody out there is listening to this thinking, oh, I'd, I'd really yeah. quite like to investigate working with Jeanette, please don't make your first question, how much do you charge? <laughs> it's just, yeah. you know, I know. I know. because yeah. because I'm I'm not competing on price. Right. Mm. I know that some of the things I offer are competitive in terms of it's is there or thereabouts for what other people charge for the same sort of thing but it's not um it's not part of my business model to try and be the cheapest and therefore win the work my business mm-hmm. model is about this is my experience this is the value that i bring this is what i can do for you and this is an appropriate amount to pay for that so yeah. you know i i yeah. start from value if you, if you don't start from uh, from what you're wanting to achieve then we're probably not going to be compatible yeah. but yeah that's taken a lot of work 
to get rid of my expectations and my assumptions about what other people will or won't pay for things and, and how to put this stuff across. Mm. I mean, it sounds sounds quite glib now, now that it comes out, but actually it's taken a huge amount of work to get to the point of being comfortable to say that. And, mm. and you know, I mean, I, yeah. tell me, tell me your thoughts on, on that. Well, I do. And, and I see this all the time. And, and, you know, what's going through my mind is, is how many opportunities do we, do we miss potentially because of making these assumptions? Mm. Now, I hear all the time, you know, when uh, trainers are, so we're talking about, you know, raising their prices with their, you know, either new clients or existing clients. And, you know, they agonize for ages, like you say, oh, no, I can't do that. And then when they've actually gone to them and asked, they've gone, yeah, yeah, okay, great. You know, and they're like, oh, they didn't bat an eyelid. Yeah. Well, yeah, they won't and how much energy have you actually wasted and you know fair play to you you've actually asked the question how many times do you not even ask the question mm. and miss the opportunity yeah. as, as a result and you know and we almost did that with the future fit course didn't we? yeah 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 we almost didn't run it mm-hmm. almost didn't run it yep. because of our own assumptions yep. uh, around coronavirus has just happened mm-hmm. you know got any money we were we were also feeling a little bit oh you know people might be thinking how, how they shouldn't be charging because there's yep. all this free stuff about and we agonized for ages we did, we? absolutely because the, we were the uh our perception uh, was based on the inputs we were having at the time and the inputs we were having was you had people cancelling memberships yep. i had people yep. cancelling work um you know we we were in um various groups that were talking about people going oh my god I've just lost another client and so you know I'm I'm I am not at all surprised that that was the conclusion that we came to uh, but looking back on it uh, and me now and you now uh, if we could time travel and go back and just go shh, yeah. shh, don't be so ridiculous you know take take some of your own medicine here uh, and yeah. just put it out there because you don't know and what happened we had you know tons of people signing up to yeah. tons yeah. of people signing up and you know from my point of view, my worry, uh, and I've talked about this before, was, you know, it was just coming round to people talking about us going into a lockdown just before I went skiing. And I was concerned that it's like, well, do I do this holiday or do I stay and try and put some stuff on to try and, you know, work out what's going on? As it happened, I ended up um, putting out some some free stuff. But uh, it's funny enough, it was you saying, no, 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 you've got time. It's all right. It'll be OK. Because uh, it was more about, OK, how can I help people get online? And of course, what I was thinking about, how can I help people get online but still not have my business go under because nobody can afford to pay to, yeah. to <laughs> go online? Another assumption. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yet I have never been busier because yeah. the people who um, the people for whom this has been a real struggle, uh, it doesn't matter honestly I don't think it it would have mattered whether we charged or not people weren't in the right headspace if they were really struggling because their their work had been sort of the rug had been pulled out from underneath them overnight they weren't in the right headspace to do anything about it certainly not for the first round uh, of future Mm -hmm. fit but those people for whom you know they had either built up a a bit of a a buffer uh, or you know they they had the opportunity uh, and they had the money it was like oh now actually what I've got is time because my clients are cancelled all over the place, I now have time to, to do all these things. So I've not been busier, um, uh, really, since uh, since coronavirus sort of came about, since the first lockdown it came about. But we've talked about that plenty uh, previously mm-hmm. on the podcast. But you're quite right. It was, We were, you know, really going back and forth on this. So is it going to send out the wrong message if we put something out there saying, you know, we're going to do this, but we're going to charge for it because you're right there were so many people putting stuff out there for free um mm. uh, and then i've seen now in our, in other groups that i'm in people getting um were getting uh messages back from people who probably wouldn't consider themselves to be trolls but it's it was a trolly way of dealing with it from people going i can't believe you're charging for this when people are going through uh, 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 uh. And it's like, okay, that's the same argument when you see somebody eating as saying, I can't believe you're eating when there are people starving in the world. It's a ridiculous Mm. argument. They are not equivalent things. It's a crazy argument. Um, What they should um, uh, be thinking about is, okay, that's that person doing that thing. Either they will or they won't get people coming in. Fair enough. It's, you know, there's nothing else about it. Nothing else about it. And so, you know, I think... 
a couple of bits of advice um, around that, you know, number one would be just notice when you're doing that, mm-hmm. you, know, it, you know, it's all about the noticing, isn't it? Just notice when those thoughts kind of pop into your head and, and, and what impact that is having on you in terms of your ability to move mm-hmm. forward, you know, or not. Um, so that would definitely be the first thing. And then secondly, <laughs> just stop doing it, yeah. you know, stop making assumptions because it's not our job to do that and we can wear ourselves out um thinking about all the different permutations and all the different outcomes and the things people may or may not be thinking and we don't know no No. you know it'd be great if we did know wouldn't it be great if we did know but we don't know and we will never know exactly so just you know just stop doing it don't let it stop you from moving forward Mm -hmm. and uh, you know just just be open to you know, putting stuff out there and just see what happens. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, and we're not trying to say that it, it's as easy as that. Um, you know, it takes a bit of work, but start doing the work because the the more that you go, oh no, that sounds a bit difficult uh, to to do. Uh, then the longer you're going to be waiting to to be able to go. Actually, it's fine. This is what the price is. This is this is the value that I bring, or whatever the thing might be. I mean, we've centered a lot on price because we know that's the thing that comes up a lot. But there are other things, other assumptions that you might make, um, uh, and it's always worth looking for the evidence, finding the the evidence, and and making sure that you are not inhibiting good things that could come because of the limiting beliefs that that you've got in and around uh, this stuff anyway did we did we do that justice was that all right i think so i think so just a little yeah don't want to spend too long on it but you just a few top tips yeah that. exactly so, uh, yeah so dog walking digest oh well two things have happened with jen this week number one she's been to the groomers uh-huh. so you know had literally she's not been since october for obvious reasons uh-huh. and uh you know has had months and months and months of hair cut off so <laughs> uh, one looks again half the size mm-hmm. as, uh, as she was before uh two feels a lot lighter yeah. is a lot happier and uh and three looks absolutely beautiful Aww. so you know so that's uh that's good news mm-hmm. And then the other side, we decided uh, over the weekend that, um, and uh, she's, I'm sure she's going to be very happy about this, that there's going to be no more plodding up the hill. (laughs) Because it's just getting increasingly more difficult to, she doesn't want to go out, she doesn't want to, she doesn't like the lead, she doesn't like going up the hill, it's obviously, you know, a strain for her. Having said that, I do feel that she has got fraud... (laughs) Her middle name is Fraud um, because she does this. And then literally when she gets down to the beach and you like throw a stone for her, she's running around. Yeah. And, you know, it's not as if she can't run. She clearly can. But she's obviously just, you know, not feeling inspired to. She's you know, allowed to be a grumpy old lady. Yeah. I mean, she is. what is she now? 13? 14. 14, 14 now. Yeah. It? Yeah. 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 So, you so, know, she's allowed. She's allowed. She's allowed. She's allowed. So we've decided that uh, we got, obviously you've got to we've got to keep taking her out for walks because mm-hmm. it's uh, you know keep the joints yes. going and and all, obviously mentally as well. Mm-hmm. It's good of her to go out. So, uh, but there's going to be no more plodding up the hills. So we have to find other places that are flat, even if it involves getting in the car and driving somewhere it's just got to be somewhere where she can just walk yeah. and, and not just have going up the hill so, oh yeah. poor love poor love well speaking of joints and and uh, well muscles and all that kind of thing scamp is uh, absolutely no after effects after pulling a muscle last week uh, he was in fact uh, fine on the tuesday no, no issues with, with that whatsoever um but he has got increasingly fussy about taking treats from people around the park i can't remember if i've mentioned this before he knows all the people that have treats and i honestly he he has got the butter wouldn't melt expression off to a t of so he will run up to them and he'll sit in front of them and he'll look up at them with his tail wagging in the background oh, like you know yeah. and the number of people that go oh but look at him look at his eyes like this the thing is they will get whatever treat they happen to carry which is usually stuff that their own dog likes obviously yeah. they'll get it out and they'll hand it to him and he'll sort of <laughs> just look away if he doesn't approve of the treat and honestly i have never seen so many grown adults 
cater to the whims of a dog that is just got you know he's got fuss pot written all over him he really does so they're breaking these things in half and and then they're going well do you want to try and give it to him and I go, mm, yeah all right then so what I tend to do is is uh, sort of go to hand it to him and then shove it in his mouth so it's like no you will eat that you're not going to be rude uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, a couple of times he does prefer smaller treats to larger treats because he's got, you know, a Jack Russell mouth. Yeah. So it is smaller um, compared to, to the rest of the size of his body. But sometimes he's just being fussy. And honestly, what he'll do sometimes, he'll take it, drop it on the ground, go, what else you got? And <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, my dog is so rude. So rude. Diva. <laughs> Completely. Complete diva. And it's like, oh, really? And then the other thing, I think I've mentioned this before, the other thing that he does is that he pretends in the evening as a, at mum's, he pretends that he wants to go outside because if he goes outside and comes back in again, then mum gives him a treat. Uh, and I'm like, don't treat him. Oh, but, oh, but, mm -hmm. he's my grand dog. Yeah. <laughs> so now, of course, he's like, well, let's forget the going outside bit. Let's just go as if we're going to go outside. Look at it. And go and sit on the sofa and, and wait for our treat. And it's honestly, he's not daft that one. But no, uh, I mean, not. he's got he's got more brains than he gives away sometimes. But uh, yesterday we we found a new walk, um, which somebody had told mum about up near theirs because it's loads of farmland around where they are and, and lots of bridal paths as well. So it's good for walks. It's not as good as Queen's Park, I don't think, but it's it's OK. Um, but we found a new walk and most glorious bluebell wood. I mean, absolutely gorgeous, but loads of pheasant uh, around. Um, and I mean, it turns out afterwards we think we probably shouldn't have walked through there there was nothing to say don't walk through this bit uh, and we were following a bridal path up to that point but having come out the other side and then gone down to to rejoin the path to go back again we sort of saw the sign that said private no right of way like, hmm. but the bridal path told us so we think we should have walked all the way around the woods as yeah. opposed to going through <laughs> but the path was there and there was nothing to tell us not to so we walked through and there's all these pheasant and we'd seen hares and all those so of course scamp absolutely had to go on the lead because if he didn't he'd have run off and then that could have been anything up to three hours uh before we got him back again because he would just run and run and run whereas yeah. copper took two steps towards the pheasant and it was like oh, i can't be bothered now <laughs> He's a spaniel, for goodness sake. They're supposed to be darting in and out and all over the place. And he's just like, well, you know, I'll come if I feel like it. Yeah, honestly, daft dog, daft dog. So, yeah, so, I mean, it was, it was a lovely, lovely walk, apart from the wind yeah. again. Uh, but when we, were in the, when we were in the woods, it, it wasn't that windy. Yeah. It was lovely, really glorious. But, yeah, the, the sight of, like, this carpet of bluebells, just gorgeous. Mm, yeah, really it's, nice. It's We've got uh, not only that, but we've got uh, uh, wild garlic as well, which Ooh. is really oh, lovely. lovely. Yeah, parks yeah. and whatnot around here. Very nice. Really very, nice, very, very nice. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Right. Any more for any more? I think we're done. I don't think so. I think we have rambled on enough. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, have a good week, everybody. Yes. And we will be back again. Same time, same place. See you all again soon. Bye. Bye.